Well, uh, hello and welcome to our midweek worship for this week. Um, maybe we should have had that piece of music at uh, last week because uh, last week was Pentecost, the birthday of the church, and so we could have been having a birthday party. Anyhow, it links to this week with the uh, song Father God, I Wonder, as we think about the Trinity and uh, the reflection on God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We're going to start with a prayer that relates to that. Let us come to God, who is three yet one. God the Father who creates and sustains us. God the Son who saves and keeps us. God the Holy Spirit, who lives within us. A person three persons united by love. Let us enter into the mystery of God's love and his connections to us at all levels. Merciful Father, gracious Son, tender Spirit, be with us today as we seek to know you better. May we learn from each other as we search for you teach us to ask questions as well as to expect answers. Give us fresh understanding of yourself today. Amen. And our first song is indeed uh, the song that we've been listening to. i 
hear the story of good news from the first book of Kings. Solomon prayed, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven above or on the earth below. You keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you in wholehearted devotion. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. You made that promise with your own mouth and with your own hands you have fulfilled it today. And now, O Lord God of Israel, carry out the additional promise you made to your servant David, my father. For you said to him, if your descendants guard their behavior and faithfully follow me as you have done, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Now, O God of Israel, fulfill this promise to your servant David, my father. But will God really live on earth? Why, even the highest heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Nevertheless, listen to my prayer and my plea, O Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is making to you today. May you watch over this temple night and day, this place where you have said, my name will be there. May you always hear the prayers I make toward this place. May you hear the humble and earnest requests from me and your people Israel when we pray towards this place. Yes, hear us from heaven where you live, and when you hear, forgive. In the future, foreigners who do not belong to your people Israel will hear of you. They will come from distant lands because of your name, for they will hear of your great name and your strong hand and your powerful arm. And when they pray towards this temple, then hear from heaven where you live and grant what they ask of you. In this way, all the people of the earth will come to know and fear you, just as your own people Israel do. They too will know that this temple I have built honors your name. May your eyes be open to my requests and to the requests of your people Israel. May you hear and answer them whenever they cry out to you. For when you brought our ancestors out of Egypt, O Sovereign Lord, you told your servant Moses that you had set Israel apart from all the nations of the earth to be your own special possession. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we think about what has been written down in Scripture, may we think more fully about how we live our lives in your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. I almost said please be seated, which uh, I think probably wasn't necessary. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, the reading that we have before us today is uh, another of the prayers of the Bible, which we're slowly working through. And uh, there are, again, the kind of structure that we found in many of the prayers where the person who's praying, in this case it's King Solomon again, as it was last week, uh, starts by remembering what God is like and telling God what he's like. And we've thought about that previously. And then he goes on to remind God of what God has promised. And then he goes on to make his requests. When he re reflects on what God has promised, he remembers at this point in his world and in his life that God has promised that if, if the sons and daughters, the children of King David, continue to follow in his, in the following after God, in the ways and practices that David had where he focused on God and centred his life around God, 
then God has promised that there would forever be a member of David's family on the throne of the people of Israel. The reality is that at this stage either Solomon meant it or he was saying it in a bit of desperation. We really don't know. But we know that as his life went on, he began to rely on the promise rather than actually uh, fulfill the other part of the covenant. The other part which was that he should be faithful to following the Lord his God. And so it is also in prayer that we can often bring things to God and there can be a requirement for us to respond in some way or other. And that's the only way the prayer will be answered. And it's only through that kind of approach to prayer that we will see things happen. Uh, that God chooses to use us to be the answers to our prayers. Uh, empowering us and strengthening us, surely, but also in not just letting the things happen that we uh, glibly ask for. Rather, being quite... Uh, strong in trying to make sure that we respond in the right way and that's part of the way that prayer and the relationship between God and us develops because it's as we respond in the right way as we uh, do what God wants that we begin to live in his ways and know the fullness and values of what he wants for us if we simply live in our own ways and make the right requests with our mouths say the right things then as Jesus so often says about those who are leading the people of Israel in his time that they are hypocrites they are people who do not hold to what God really wanted they do not live by it and that is an important aspect of how prayer is supposed to function it's not supposed to function as a thing that you can do once in the past and then rely on it for the rest of your life but we are to be constantly praying and constantly responding, constantly in conversation, constantly in action. And those things are to be held together. If they're not held together, then we are merely saying empty and pointless words. And there are many times in the Bible where uh, those who claim to be following after God are not really doing what they are asking or what they are being asked to do and so they end up not getting their requests but if we are those who are responsive and living out the covenant relationship the uh, doing what God wants of us getting to know him and live his ways then we find that there are answers to what we do and uh, this is also noticeable in the second part of the prayer where Solomon remembers that the people of Israel's task is to uh, be a separate people who show to the other nations what God is like. He then goes on to say that people will see that and see the temple and see what's happening in the place of Israel and they will be drawn to him. But so often what happens in the history and the actions of those peoples uh, from that time is that they uh, separate themselves out and don't any longer want to see the salvation of others. They uh, are a bit like Jonah who uh, is asked by God to go and help others to come back to him and he doesn't want to see that happen and he tries to run away. They just simply don't see that their calling is to do something uh, more than being a separate people. No, they are to be a separate people to show what God is like, to show what his love is like, to show what his kindness is like. And therefore, although they're separate, they are very, very engaged, very, very engaged with those around about them because they are full of love for them. They are like God who cares for every person and everything he has made. So we learn things through not only looking at the prayer, but looking at how it works out in the future and how those prayers of history are effective or not effective and be able to see that where prayer is effective is when we respond properly to God and where prayer is just empty words then prayer does not make much of a change and so that uh, relates then to the final part of this prayer where repentance com coming back to God and asking for forgiveness is such an important part of the way that prayer works because we will 
at times say empty words and not have true actions and repentance is about saying to God look I'm sorry I did that I am going to change not I just want you to forgive me not I just admit to it but I'm going to live differently and we then take that and live it and act it we pray that God may help us to do that because it's not always easy but he promises to go with us and to strengthen us and through prayer to make a change that is positive in our world we pray that these things may happen Amen So we're going to uh, have another piece of music which allows us to reflect and allows us to ask again maybe to come back in repentance to God to say I want to do this and then uh, to respond to these words or what other things that God has laid on our hearts and the song is Christ be in my waking. be in my waking as the sun is rising in my day of working with me every hour Christ be in my resting as the day is ending coming and refreshing watching through the night Christ be in my thinking and my understanding, guarding me from evil, walking in the light. Christ be in my speaking, every word a blessing, pure and not deceiving, grace to all who hear. Jesus, this is my
Christ be in my waking as the sun is rising in my day of working with me every hour. Christ be in my resting as the day is ending. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us admit our failures and weaknesses. Nicodemus came to you by night. He didn't want to be seen for fear of what others would think. We are guilty of hiding too from you from each other, from ourselves. We hide from experiences we don't understand. We shy away from the unknown, from uncertainty. Lord God, grant us a humble spirit to know when we are not on the right track. Forgive us when we are falling short of who we really can be in you. Help us to stop hiding and give ourselves up to our new forgiven life, finding new experiences, new joys to share. Our confidence is in you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Our mighty God waits for us to come to him as Nicodemus came to Jesus. He knows when we are truly open to him. He fills that openness with everything we truly need. He forgives our sins and gives us peace. We thank you for giving and holy God. We believe in you and your loving kindness. We trust you to make us whole. Amen. Amen. God the Father, your heart goes out to all of your creation with eager longing. Ground back into your being those who flounder and struggle with the pressures of life. May they see some shape, some purpose to life, and find a way to move forward. May their struggles become less tangled, and may they find calm in the chaos of their living. God the Son, you wept for your people who had become like sheep without a shepherd. Enfold in your love those who know little or no love, security or peace those who live in fear and loneliness, those who are shrouded in pain and smothered by death, those without family support and succor or depth of friendship and care. God, the Holy Spirit, you come as comforter and guide, as hope giver and life enabler. Embolden those who have no hope, no dreams, no visions. Open the hearts and minds of those who have no knowledge of you, who have not seen you, nor felt you, nor encountered you. 
those who, without faith and trust, are seemingly lost. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a trinity of love, the source of love, the shape of love, pour out your love on all your children and renew their spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Our Dad in heaven above, let everyone look up to you and the area where you are in charge grow. May what you want happen on earth as perfectly as it does in heaven. Please give to us what we need for today. Forgive us when we think or do wrong things, just as we don't hold it against those who hurt us. Guide us away from whatever we might want, but as unhelpful to us, and protect us from all that is nasty and destructive. For you are in charge of everything, you have the power to do it, and you are awesome. You always were, you are now, and always will be. Amen. And as we come to God who is love, a trinity of love as we've been thinking about, God who loves to see us build our friendship with him and grow in prayer, uh, we have this song where we come to him and find in him the strength and love that he has for us.
and now, let's join in this final prayer together. Interconnected God, help us to keep planted in you and drawing from you in every day, in every way, adventuring with you into deeper love, greater hope, renewed purpose, transformational love. Thank, Thank you for creating us, for being visible to us in Jesus, and for inspiring and empowering us with your life-giving spirit. May we know your presence closer to us than our own breathing. Amen. And may your heart be at peace and your mind be at rest. May you be confident in who you are and share God's gifts of light, hope and grace with those you meet and those you pray for. And may the blessing of God fill your hearts with hope this day and evermore. Amen. Thank you.